right well previously on my and garage we painted these pieces at the end of the video if you didn't see so you'll know that we're going with this ice blue color looks different in the clouds we got some clouds we got some rain right on our butts here so we got to get on painting this stuff so we're going to start out with painting these doors took them off got a coat of sealer on here real light coat of sealer let's get some paint on these get them protected before that rain gets us talk to you a little bit later got dirty last night because it was raining these things were getting just there's dirt all over them right now but kind of gives you an idea all right I figured I'd do a little bit of talk about the prep that I do the way I do it um, if you guys back up a couple of videos you can see the Mustang build which not many people have watched because I guess this is mostly a Volkswagen channel. But there's a lot of people that like to comment on my prep methods and say that it, you know, it's not kosher to not do your blocking with a D, if to do your blocking with a DA, stuff like that. You know, look at that Mustang and then, you know, tell me I'm doing it wrong because all that thing was done with all the blocking was done with these tools right here. A DA, like 95% of the finish work was done with this. Filler, sanding, everything, DA. Uh, a few areas I had to use, I used this 3M small 4-inch block. A lot of the areas I use one of these sponge blocks. Stiff sponge blocks, they have these at, at uh, Riley Auto Parts. I've done this like this for 35, 40 years. I did Mercedes, BMWs, all those high-end cars. And 90% of the time, these are the tools I used every once in a while. Got a long panel. I use a long board very, not very often. Now, on that car, on the Mustang, I did the premium prep method. So, I went to doing my blocking with 220 sharp 220 go through the paper a lot but use 220 you get a little bit finer block that way with the da even and then i would do my hand work with these two things and i did not hand work every panel most of it was done 100 percent with the da the corners and edges mostly with these tools here every once in a while what i would do if I felt a little bit of a wave somewhere when I was doing the DA, you know, I'd stop and feel it. I'd just take this short block right here, run it really fast with 220. Done. Can be done that way. It takes practice. It takes experience. I know a lot of guys who do it that way and do beautiful work. On this car, we're not going there. Just so you guys know, I'm not going to take this car you know it takes a lot more time to do all the sanding in the corners and edges everything's around it takes a little bit more time it takes a lot more time you and you but you still can do a pretty nice job with the da and you'll be surprised it comes out really nice it comes out smooth 
there's going to be some waves in this car. There's going to be some flaws in it. I'm not looking for a 10 out of 10 paint job. We're looking for about an 8 out of 10. And uh, that's about it. But I just wanted to be clear that everybody, you know, that looks at this stuff, there's guys that have got their opinions and whatever. And that's cool. You can write down any comment you want. That's fine. Good. But if you really want to learn something, you know, I use only these tools right here. I get a great, I can do a, a way better paint job than what you guys have even seen. I've done stuff that's so nice that it just looks perfect. Everything, you know, and I very rarely ever use a longboard. Only on a long panel, on something like a VW bus. Like on this one, there's a few microwaves in it. If I was trying to get all that out of there, I could do that. It just takes a longboard. And a lot of time that I don't have, and I'm 57 years old, I've got a bad shoulder. I can't be doing that kind of thing, you know, start doing that kind of work anymore. I'm just not going to do it. So that's why, you know, I'm not doing that sort of thing. It's because my body says, hell no. Every time I wake up in the morning, my body flips me off and says, you're not doing this. And I have to get up and have this battle every day with myself and say, no. F U F N U I'm getting up and doing it. Okay. I'm not a young guy. When I was younger, I could do all that stuff. I get longboard panels and honestly I don't have any desire to do that anymore. Me and a lot of the people who watch the channel, we'll take an eight. We love an eight. An eight's a nice looking paint job. So another thing I noticed is somebody said that you know my bondo's gonna fall off. <laughs> Or my primer is on too thick. Okay, let's talk about this because these might be valid concerns for some people doing these this type of work. So according to these guys, Tamco, they do make really good products. This primer is supposed to be a super high build primer. And if you look here, it's a DTM. If you go on their website, you'll see... Uh, a lot of braggadocious stuff and all of it is true about how this product can be used uh, kind of like a polyester primer so again to address those people that might have a valid concern in if you were using the wrong kind of primer if you're using a urethane primer the, some of the urethane primers do not spec for really high build like this and if you're using that kind of primer, you might have some problems with it not with it peeling or coming off or cracking and stuff like that. So the old school, we used to use the old, old, the oldest of the old school, we used to use lacquer primer. In fact, we had products called uh, uh, one called uh, Preparacoat. Anybody old enough to remember that one? Preparacoat, that stuff was awesome. You could put it on two, three, four coats thick. And you could sand it, and it was just super thick stuff. It was thicker than even uh, uh, stuff. And that was the old school way. We would do it and just block the crap out of everything and just get everything down really smooth and then paint it. Um, and then they came up with, you know, the, the uh, polyester primer. And that stuff is still valid today. There's some of them that have, high, that have more flexibility to them. I'm not even aware of those, really, because... This product right here is a happy medium. It sands a little faster than those. So, you know, I'm not really looking at those other polyesters now. So this product's called like Slick Sand and some of the others. And I, you know, you need to read the specifications on the products and I always do. So they have, some of those have some flexibility to them. A lot of the problems with polyester primers were the rigidity of the primer was so stiff that it would crack as of had as you had panel stress because you put it on really thick it's kind of like coating the whole thing with filler and then sanding it and guys do that too and you know if you're going to say something that something's going to delaminate or not stick or whatever that's just as bad because you know if filler is a polyester product polyester primer is a polyester product what's the difference between the two one's sprayable one is put on it with a and it still, it still ends up with the same problem as you have a polyester product that's stiff and a surface with stress 
and there can be cracks. So the thing that's nice about the urethane primer, like the Tamco primer, is it has some flexibility to it for panel stress, for vibration, but it still is allowed to go on really super thick. Not quite as thick as you do with the polyester. There's a couple different ways. So again, there's a couple different ways you can do your body work. Okay, you can go through, sand all your filler, perfect. And, you know, put all, you know, like, what's his name? Uh, DIY Body School, what's his, you know, he, I don't know. He talks about it. He always goes, all the filler's got to be over bare metal. And that's good practice. You can't go wrong with that. So you go all over bare metal. You get everything perfect before you put your first coat of primer on. Now, if you live in a place like Florida, that's almost going to be impossible to do because, it's going to rust before you ever get that primer on. So, you know, this doesn't follow for everyone. It just, no one system works for everyone. And that's kind of why I'm explaining this stuff. It's because it might help you understand wherever you're at, you might have to follow a different set of rules. Um, but you can do all your body work, all your filler over bare metal, and then go and epoxy prime after or some guys epoxy prime first sand the areas and put the filler on over that has to be sanded go over that and then they do it that way and then they put their and then they get everything really perfect and then they put a thin coat of primer on now if you're doing that then you can use a different primer there's ones that are not it is for the extreme high build that this is and then that's where people are using that primer that they use for that and they're putting it on too thick, you know, to do it the technique that I'm using, which the technique that I use is I do a kind of a rough end on my body work. I go through and do the filler really fast. I don't worry about, because it's a faster method. I go through and I don't worry about if I got a few low spots. If I don't worry if it's a little bit wavy, I just run it, okay? Then I go through, put my first coat of primer on, guide coat it. And I go back and I use glazing. I use a some products that are designed to go over primer so like this stuff right here ag47 spec to go over sanded again i say sanded primer sanded paint same thing with these glazings there's a few different ones that do the same thing glazings and filler are polyester products these also have some ability for some flexibility and panel stress so there's it's these are really good really good products so they can be used you know as a skim coat so do i want to get everything you know perfect before i do the primer it just takes a lot more time it's so much easier to do this right here this is guide coat sand it look for your low spots sand the low spots put a little bit of this stuff on correct it you're talking about micro fills you know, I do all my major fills before I put that first coat of primer on. So the little stuff I'm doing before there, I've never had it fail. So again, you do it your way. I'm just saying it's the way I do it. I've been doing it this way for years. I don't have issues. Okay, I don't have delamination, cracking, any of those problems. I mean, everybody does somewhat. You're going to have some issues somewhere. You're going to have... Things that you are un unforeseen. Automotive paint will school you in a minute. If you do one little thing wrong, you know, you go against the rules, it's going to get you. So, but the way I'm doing it, it, it works really good and it lasts long and I don't have issues. And I'm having, you know, where you have issues, especially is when you have your car and you're all done with it and you leave the thing out in the sun 24-7 and it's hot and you have your filler on, you know, three quarters of an inch thick and that heat and the heat and cool and heat and cool and it's out in the sun all the time it's probably going to crack you know just about with anything you do um, but if you put it on you know quarter inch thick the way it's designed and what it says on the label the thickest and you do the same thing it probably won't crack but if you keep it in the garage after you've done all that you're talking you could have a paint job that would last even this paint job that I'm doing on this, which is not going to be spectacular. It's going to be nice. Um, 
would last a long time, 10, 15 years or more. I know guys with 20-year paint jobs that have done stuff the same way that I'm doing it. It's, it's all in how you take care of the car. You know, part of it is that. But part of it's also using the right product. So anyway, I encourage you guys, you know, if you're trying to do your own thing or whatever and you want to learn a couple of new things, I have no problem with those comments. I say, you know what? put them down there because it makes me realize that I need to teach some of the stuff better because or it might be guys that do it all the time been doing it for years and they do it a different way and you know what there's nothing wrong with the way that they do it if it works and if it lasts but they go oh you know so I used to I've seen several guys over the years they go oh your way won't work it won't last you know and, and uh, you know I know several guys who block everything with a DA and they do absolutely perfect beautiful work and they've been doing it that way their whole life they don't you know follow all these paint rules and everything else that everybody does and you know it's it, it's just really it, it's really usually what you're doing you know you know so somebody says that you know I'm doing it somebody somebody's doing it wrong it's usually something that they did different or they used a different product than what you're using if they're using exactly the same products that i'm using and they're having problems you know i don't know you know it could be things like i've seen guys get two things a hardener for a gallon in a gallon of filler they give you one hardener for this and if you put in double the amount you're probably going to have issues okay it says on the label you know, X amount per, you know, it's one tube per one of these. So when guys are putting in double the amount, it's it's not designed to work that way. Okay, so it's, it's going to have issues. It's like anything. You got to just stick, you know. What a friend of mine said, he was doing stuff for a, a, a national company, and he was doing contract work for them, and they, you know, they specified a certain material, and they did an adhesion test when it went there and you know they would take a piece of tape and they would cut all these little things through it and then they would just like a piece of duct tape put it on your in your panel and they would just rip it off and if you didn't do everything exactly to the the temperature the flash time the everything that's on the label that can that sucker would delaminate it would come off so deviating from what's on the labels is you know where the problem is usually it's not you know there's there's a ton of different ways to do this there's there's a million different ways to do body work and paint and you know and the the number one thing is stick to the label what the label says where the can you're using you know if you stick to that usually it's been tested it's it works you know and it does what it's supposed to do so anyway, I decided to put this in there to kind of help you guys that are trying to DIY or whatever. And, you know, if you see a comment like that, you know, it's like, understand, you know, that that, don't let that steer you from learning, you know, and you get discouraged. That's all I can say. All right. I'll talk to you later in the video.
All right, so I just shot a light seal coat on here, kind of transparent, but mostly just because there was a lot of raw metal and I'm using it as a DTM sealer. Tamco primer can be used as a DTM sealer. So I covered up the raw metal stuff there. Not doing much up there. Um, and then the same thing in here. So just a real light coat. You can see right through it a little bit, but it's enough to get the paint to adhere and to go over that raw metal so that's what i'm doing just jams not that critical Right up in this video, I figured I'd put this in here too. Uh, if you're spraying metallics, a little bit of tricks and stuff like that to know. Um, number one, you got to put it on even. 
uh, you got to be a little bit further away than when you're spraying clear coat. You know, don't get too close. Um, so because you don't want the thing is you don't want it to you want the paint just to lay on. You don't want to have it you know push its way on. You know what I mean? So, but if you do get errors in it um, while this is drying here, I'm just I know I don't have my respirator on, but it's we're in the really open air here so it's not a big deal um and i don't do this all the time so prolonged use is when you get issues so one time ain't gonna kill you but anyway spraying the uh when you when you if you get uneven metallics like i think i got a little run going on right here because yeah i do i'll fix this and what i'll do i'll show you guys how to fix it because i just this is not your regular this is like a single stage urethane this is a single stage urethane a satin okay and then i put automotive clear this is a sign paint but it's still done the same way it's still automotive type paint so let me get something and we'll fix this little run okay so i got a little run here you guys need to see it probably not but Take a piece of tape and you get a fresh spot every time I'm moving it to a fresher spot pull the run off while the paint's wet so I do that a few times three quarter inch tape is the best it doesn't make as much mess so an inch and a half or something like that you're gonna probably make a mess so then you know this isn't really a big deal uh, on jams, if there's runs, especially in the clear, they're just going to be there. I'm not going to take them out. So, let them peel off like that. We'll let that dry for a little bit. Um, and if it's single stage urethane, if it's not metallic, you can just leave it like that. And then just right now, I would just spray over it. But since it's metallic, I got to wait a little bit. So I'm going to wait a little bit, and then I'm going to do something called drop coating or dust coating. You know, old school guys called it dusting it. Um, the young, the newest thing is they call it drop coating. And what this is, is you take your spray gun from like 12 to 18 inches away. So let's say you're doing your hood, but you always get all your stripes in it. You get 12 to 18 inches really far away where my hand is. I don't know if you can even see my hand. You can see it. How's this? So you're up here 12 to 18 inches away and you run your fan pattern real dry and really fast Really far away and dry coat it now Usually when I do that, I'll use a slow thinner a slower reducer and then I will go really fast. I'm not trying to cover anything. All I'm trying to do is get the metallics to what it does is that thinner when it hits it it kind of lifts the metallics up and kind of gets them on end so they're all the same and you can dry coat it like that really lightly really far away and you do that a few times sometimes two three times with the paint about 75 80 percent reducer and if you're doing that with like base coat the same thing you do with this um and if Back in the old days, you know, you don't really have to use the dry right, you know, the real, real fast thin or slow thinner with the base coat. Um, we used to do that with like acrylic enamel when it was metallics to get it to lay down and look even. Okay, that's how you did it. And you, and you had to use the slow thinner so that it wouldn't dry spot. But if it dry spots a little bit with the uh, base coat, it's better almost to have a little little bit too dry. You know, you don't want it really like where it's just super dry and there's just too much stuff standing up because then those shadows will show up. But if it's if it's a you know if it's just a little bit too dry and it doesn't you know like it has like orange peel in it or whatever, that's not a big deal as long as it's not too heavy. And then you'll see that the metallics will even out when you do that. So it takes a bit of practice, but that's how you I've had people. Had questions about metallics how to get them to lay down and that's how you do it um, like I said guys today call it drop coating we used to call it dust coating or you know fog it or whatever and a lot of different things like that 
And uh, so what I'm going to do on those areas is it's about ready now. I'll just shoot it real quick and I'll show you. Dry coat. Real dry. Just on that one, I have to put it a little closer. Do that a few times. I'll put that, I'll do that like three or four times. You'll still see the runs a little bit, but they won't look terrible. They were hanging really heavy. They look pretty bad. You know, like I said, jams, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. If I really wanted to get them right, I'd go through like, you see all this little stuff here. The edgy stuff like that. That's all gonna show up. And ask me if I care. Because I don't. So all that edgy stuff, it's underneath the hood. And like I said, I'm not trying to do that kind of a job here. Now if I was doing a show car, then you just spend all the time. And I'll tell you what, the jams will take you longer than painting the outside. It's a lot more work if you're trying to get all that stuff looking perfect. So anyway, that's how I do it. The dry coating. I'll do another coat right, real quick here in a second. I think it's about ready now. I got this stuff set up really fast. My spray gun's about one and a half turns out. It's really, I'm really putting it on dry. I don't want to waste a lot of material. Um, so, and I'm using accelerator in with it. So this stuff's setting up super fast. So that's example of what I'm doing. You know, it'll be different probably when you're doing something, but this gives you the idea how to do it. All right, so this is what the base coat looks like. For the clear just so you guys want to see it yeah like i said there's a lot of rough corners and edges not getting in there and start digging around with sandpaper and getting a detail sander out trying to fix all that it's just no way that's just way too much time not for me so like all this pitted stuff i don't care this is all going to get covered up anyway but i just wanted to get a coat of something on there these look pretty good this is our more of a focal area so that's i want a little bit better one thing nice about the sign industry base coat is or single stage urethane is what it is is it kind of fills in some of those garbage areas so it's not that bad it would be a lot worse if i use regular automotive base coat on this it looked like crap really but anyway this will look really nice when it's all done and cleared and all the wiring's in it nobody's ever going to care Again, this is a little bit nicer than the rest, but still not an area you're looking at. So I'm not really don't spend time on those areas very much. So this stuff is still sticky. It's sticky for a little while. I can't put the clear on. I gotta wait at least 30 minutes or so for it to catalyze. And it does have accelerator in it, so it'll dry. And it is designed as a base coat too. It's designed for an automotive clear to go over it. So it's pretty cool. And it's a little ex less expensive than paint, especially when it's extra from a job. They gave me too much paint. They keep on doing that. They keep on giving me, I go, I need a quart of paint. Or I need a gallon of paint for four locations. They give me a gallon of paint for each location. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I end up with a ton of it. But I have to buy the hardener, which is, that's not cheap either. And $180 a gallon for hardener. So not cheap stuff it's good paint it'll still last like automotive will we'll get some clear on here i'll take a look at it i don't know if i'm going to film the whole thing doing the clear it's kind of a pain there's so much jams are harder to paint than the car or they always take more time this ought to look pretty good when everything's in here the engine's in it it's gonna look really nice like i said um i'm not you know like i said i'm not trying to get this part at all we're just not even trying i sand it but i didn't i just go through and sand it just enough to get it to adhere and then i put the T dtm sealer from tamco's primer is also good as a dtm sealer and it has really good adhesion so it's better adhesion than paint so i put a coat of that down first and then i go over that then that's going to be help it adhere to some parts where i probably didn't get sanded i mean i used 
scotch bright and everything but it's just there's just look at all the corners and pieces and you know these sharp things i'm not going to sand around those things and get hurt forget that these things here that's no fun all right i'll talk to you guys a little later in the video Uh-oh, emergency rest hole. Let's fix it. Just measure off a piece here. Cut it out. Clean it up. All right, look at that. Bend it. All right, I used my sheet metal bender. But you could use duckbill pliers to do the same thing. Yeah. Shape it. The not so noisy way first. That looks like in there, huh? Then we gotta make it round a little bit. I'll put it like that. gonna be too fancy with it it's kind of under the car but that I think check it out see hopefully that was in frame yeah, something like that it's a little different but I just kind of take the edge of that off and I knew it was a little short yeah, that's, probably, that's about the same shape it's cut right here over there Let's do this. What I'll do is I'll measure. It's easier to cut this to shape than it is to cut this, maybe. All right.
Well, if you guys can see it, I sure can't. So I couldn't see everything. As soon as I put the helmet on, I can't see a damn thing. Just start guessing. So that's the kind of welding you get when you're that. So, but it's strong. So that's all I give a rip about. We're gonna put filler on there and make it look like better. That's all we can do under the car in the fender well. Take a look at it in a second. All right, a little look before we put the primer on. Ain't much. I ain't looking under here. I ain't barely but sanding under there. That's it. There's after primer. Ain't much to look at. All you can see is just right like when you're standing right here. You just see that rust hole. Didn't look very good, so that's why I wanted to fix it. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, if it was in the fender well, we might have left it there. Fix those later. I told him he can put some uh dig them out he's going to take this thing up on the lift and clean out underneath probably power wash everything underneath it and then he's got some of that rust stuff he's going to hit on everything and then uh he's going to treat all the rust underneath like all that stuff it's all going to get treated later and then just put some uh black paint on it that'll be good keep it from getting worse just slow it down a lot heck of a lot well, my lifetime and his put together probably so anyway let's take a look at these uh jams here let's take a look everything's all done looks more blue in this light we got clouds today it's beautiful today it's like 70 i can we got her working all day you can really see the blue. Hopefully you guys can see it like I can. And then when the, it's almost like really close to that polar silver color bug. Early, early cars had polar silver. Not a very common color, but it looks really cool on a Kia. Really close to polar silver. Let's look at the back. And once you get all your engine stuff in here, that'll look really nice. No perfect looking one, but it's all painted. Look here. What's nice is we got paint in the areas that they never paint. There's a gully in there that never gets protected on this car. It just gets that whatever they dip it in stuff on it. That's it. Oh, we did uh, the dash too. Just shot a quick coat of, of uh, base and clear on there. Didn't make it really nice, just so that when you're, you know, doing something, you don't see white under there. So, that looks pretty good. All the wiring, gas tank, and everything here. It'll distract all the ugly stuff and make it look really nice. So, anyway, that's it for this one. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Uh, pretty exciting. This thing's going to get painted very, very soon. Oh, yeah, I didn't show you this crap back here this is just protection only um, some you know paint paint is to beautify and protect and this one is only to protect that's going to get covered up but at least it has something on it to keep it from rusting and that's going to get a lot of sun back there so we wanted some good automotive paint on there so something a little better than you know rust oleum or something like that might start to weather with all that sun on there but anyway we'll talk to you in the next one hopefully you enjoyed the uh little stuff done here and uh be looking up for that next one with this thing painted talk to you then if you're ever going to try this just don't torch the glass it'll just shatter sometimes just get it hot the heat gun works too still don't get the glass too hot same thing It'll bust. Just softens it up so you can get underneath it. This stuff's hard as a rock. 1954 original rubber. Never been out of here. I wish that was a little nicer. 
This one's not being very nice. It's still a little bit warm, so it should pull out. One came out. Get you guys here. It's probably cooled off a little bit too much. Get it too hot, it just falls apart. It's just you gotta get it out of here to get the stuff lubricated, all the bolts and everything. So they'll come out. Getting it started sometimes is a challenge, especially with one hand. It's all just not hot anymore, so losing its pliability. Yeah, it's just hard as a rock again. Uh, so, so I can get to these, I gotta lubricate those and the ones up here. Let it sit overnight. Yeah. You see these things right here? Never throw these away. These, the new ones you get, they just don't work. So I use these these uh, old original wires, and I put them on the new rubber, and they just go right in. The original, the reproduction stuff, you have to bend, rebend the wire. I mean, if you don't have them. You have to rebend it and all kinds of stuff to get it to stay in place. These original ones, they just pop right in and stay. Hey, why don't you use the heat gun? It's slower. I like it fast. Fast. That's what it's all about. See, I'll take everything I've got to get that thing to come loose. Just a little hotter, maybe. Not too hot. Just right. No, it's still hot. Okay. See, little trick there. 